Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our parent preview of the victim services presentation we are preparing for in uh, all of our third grade classrooms beginning in February. So with us this evening to actually share this preview with you is Ms. Jessica Rice from Victim Services. And she typically presents this preview in person in our district, in one of our elementary schools. And this year, we're actually sharing the information with you uh, via this video conferencing as we've begun to do more and more in our district. And hopefully, it, it works better with your schedule and allows you to tune in from the comfort of your own home. So I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Jessica Rice, and she will review some of the things that we try to inform your children about and help them to understand um, when it comes to this topic, which is a very sensitive topic. And then we'll also introduce you to the video that your children will actually see, they'll view. And if you have any questions or comments, we'll afford you the opportunity to share those as well toward the end. So I'll turn it over to Ms. Rice. Thanks so much for joining. Great. Thank you so much for welcoming, um, having me here um, and providing this program. Um, my name is Jessica Rice. I'm from Victim Services Center, um, and I'm here. I'm going to create awareness about child sexual abuse, so give you some definitions, and then how to talk to your child about their body and sexuality in an age-appropriate way. And then I am going to present the program as if you were um, second graders, and then you'll see the video. Okay, and the slide is going to come up. There we go. So a little bit about the center. So I am from Victim Services Center of Montgomery County. It's a nonprofit agency located in Norristown, and what we do is serve victims of crime. Um, we are a rape crisis center, but we also handle other violent crime. So we have burglary, robbery, um, theft, physical assault. All of our services are free and confidential. Um, the services are advocacy, so we can go to court with you, we go to the police department with you, and just help you navigate the criminal justice system. And then we also provide counseling. C counseling is completely free as well um, for children and adults. We have group counseling, and significant others of a victim can receive counseling as well. So maybe you're not the direct victim, but you are the significant other of the victim, you can receive counseling as well. And then prevention education is my department and we provide services throughout Montgomery County to um, try to prevent crime. And there's my contact information. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to email me. Um, and also if there's anything in today's presentation that um, bothers you or brings back memories or you're confused about something, please call our hotline and you can be anonymous. Okay. So I'm gonna start off with some awareness and statistics. So nationally, every two minutes, someone in the US is sexually assaulted. So this is a terrible um, epidemic, it's a problem, and it's great that we are talking about sexual violence now. As far as child sexual abuse in the U US, there's one in four girls and one in six boys who will be sexually abused before their 18th birthday. So every year it's estimated more than 650,000 of our nation's children become victims of child sexual abuse. And what does that look like? So what does that look like? So um, that number, we would have to fill up Citizens Bank Park 15 times to represent that number. So it's really great that your district, your school district, is tackling this problem by creating awareness and empowering children. So if there's anything that um, you missed from this lesson, I'm hoping that you remember this goal. The goal is um, that parents and all adults have the responsibility to end child sexual abuse, not children. And then one action you can take is to teach and enforce healthy boundaries. Create a space for children to tell adults no to touch. We need to empower them and let them know that there are limits and there are boundaries, and that is a healthy thing to do. It keeps you safe. And then the benefit of creating boundaries, it creates growth, respect in relationships, safety, 
for individuals and relationships and for friendships. And this also goes for adults. Adults should also have healthy boundaries with each other. And this is activity I usually do in person, but I'm just gonna describe it. So think about a tree. If you draw a tree in your mind, in the roots of the tree, think about where do children or where did you receive your information about sexuality, about your body, about relationships, about sex education, um, about consent, all of these different things. Where did you get that information? So you might think about school, you might think about your family, maybe church, maybe the media. Nowadays, it's the internet. So there's many different sources where children and we get information about sexuality in our body. Now, think in your head, circle the top three sources you want your child to take information from, where you feel it's safe and valuable. So some people will say, I want my child to get information from their school from, and from their family. So, um, and, then, and then in the tree, in the branches of the tree, these are the values and the lessons that you want your child to have. So maybe you want to tell your child that your their body belongs to them, to them and it's private, or they have a right to be safe. Um, we need to respect people's boundaries and limits. So different lessons and values, it's really important that we have this conversation so they don't get the message from somewhere else. So what is child sexual abuse? Um, it is not limited to sexual intercourse. It can be any inappropriate sexual behavior. It can be with a child, in the presence of a child, or involving a child. And this ranges from non-touching to touching. So non-touching, it could be just showing a child um, pornography or they witnessed um, uh, some kind of sexual activity. It can cause, it, it is considered sex sexual abuse. It's traumatizing, it's confusing for the child. And then, it, and then it can range to touching or actual sexual assault. So some protective factors when it comes to child sexual abuse. This is taken from the CDC, the Center for Disease and Control and Prevention. Um, healthy age appropriate sexuality education. And that's what we're doing in your school district, um, providing uh, the program to the second graders. And I will show that uh, third grade, sorry. And then an open, honest communication with your child. So for example, maybe they had a question about their body or the opposite sex. They want to, they're confused about, you know, genitals and they're asking you questions about it. I, I think you should encourage open communication because they're asking you for information and that's safe and you should value that um, situation. And then empowered children is a protective factor connecting with the community. So we're doing that right now by connecting with the school, Victim Services Center, um, providing this program for your third graders. Setting boundaries, active bystanders. Um, so if you see a child that might be in danger, or if a child tells you something that's um, unsettling, you do have the right to report it or take action to protect children from child sexual abuse. And then creating awareness, which is what we're doing as well. So here's another statistic, 93% of victims under the age of 18, so children, know their abuser. This is actually very similar to adult um, victims of sexual assault as well. Now we always talk about stranger danger and how we have to wait, um, look out for strangers and they're dangerous, but it's really important to also pay attention to the people that you know, the people that you trust. So some typical behaviors of a perpetrator um, would be they're, they're not a scary monster, they have inappropriate time spent alone with children, or they have a special child that they're always um, giving attention to, they violate personal space or boundaries, giving special gifts, um, insisting on physical contact, even if the child says stop or they look uncomfortable or scared. And then grooming behaviors. And what that is, is the perpetrator often tries to gain the trust of the child and also of the parents, of the family members, of the teachers to make it seem like this person is safe and appropriate. And grooming behaviors can also include 
um, the perpetrator tries to gain access to the child. So at first, they will ask if they can take the child to get ice cream, and they do really fun activities, gaining the trust. And then the perpetrator will keep um, doing more behaviors with that child until um, they actually make physical contact. It's, um, um, it's, uh, it doesn't happen instantly. It's um, a ma manipulative um, behavior. So it's important to know it's not a stranger. Most of the time, it's someone that you trust. And I also want to say that just trust your gut. Just because some of those um, descriptive um, words about a perpetrator is listed doesn't mean that they're a perpetrator. But if you feel uncomfortable with a person, an adult, um, with your child, then don't leave your child alone with that person. You have a right to be safe and your child needs to be safe. So go with your gut feeling. Risk reduction strategies. So be actively involved in your child's life. I'm not saying that you're not, but just ask about their daily activities. Who do they um, have contact with? Uh, did they have any new relationships? Did they meet anyone new? How do they feel about that person? Um, screen caregivers. Um, get their back. Um, get a background check. Make sure there's nothing there. Um, have conversations about the media. So if they see something on TV or commercial and they ask you a question about that, um, use that opportunity to teach them about values um, and your beliefs behind sex education and sexuality. And know the warning signs. There is a um, packet that I can share that lists different warning signs for children who may be affected by child sexual abuse that I, I can share. Okay, and then other strategies include encourage the child to be assertive, to um, let them know that their feelings are important and they have a right to be safe and to speak about their feelings and tell people what they need and what they want. So teach about boundaries, who are, um, what is okay to do what, with one person might not be okay to do with another person. For example, it's okay to give kisses and hugs to maybe grandma and grandpa, but maybe not with a teacher or um, some other person that you believe is um, would be an inappropriate contact. Um, talk about their bodies um, as a matter of fact um, thing. Don't make it shameful. Um, um, have them feel empowered about their bodies. Nothing to be ashamed about. So they can talk to you about it. Give undivided attention when they bring up um, questions about sexuality and their body and relationship. Don't punish them for seeking help. Maybe they saw something online or they did something or they saw something. Don't punish them or get upset with them for um, coming to you for help. And then ask open-ended question. If you have questions about their behavior, um, then ask open-ended questions so you um, don't put words in their mouth. For example, maybe you see your child playing with their toys in a very sexual way and you're kind of confused. Ask open-ended questions about it so you can see where did they, they get that kind of activity from? Where did they learn about that sexual behavior with their toys? And here's an example of an activity that a lot of our counselors do. With children that come for counseling, we talk about boundaries and how important they are. Um, we have different people that a child might run into, so their grandma, a teacher, a babysitter, um, an uncle, and we have them on different cards, and we have the child place where they, they believe um, this person should belong in the boundary bubble. And if the person crosses that boundary, for example, a babysitter might be under high five or hug, but if the babysitter tries to kiss them and they feel uncomfortable or unsafe, they need to tell their parent about that or they need to tell you about that boundary being crossed. All right, safety conversation. So teach the correct names for body parts. And this is important because children often, if they do disclose about sexual abuse, they disclose indirectly. So they will call their private parts um, their bunny. There was a situation where um, a little girl tried to tell her babysitter about um, the sexual abuse, and she told her babysitter, um, my my, I think it was her teacher, I don't know who it was, but the person kept touching her bunny, and then 
the babysitter said, well, just tell the person to stop touching it. Or why don't you just let people touch your bunny? And the babysitter really thought that she was talking about a stuffed animal or maybe a pet or somebody, something, something else. So if your child knows the names of their body part, they're going to be direct. They're going to say, mom, dad, someone's trying to touch the private parts of my body. They're touching my vagina. They're touching my penis, things like that. Um, help them understand boundaries, like we said. Saying no is okay. Um, I think in our society, some children believe that they're not allowed to say no to adults. They always have to listen to adults. And this allows perpetrators to um, keep abusing children. Remind them that secrets are never okay. Your child should not be keeping any secrets from you, whether it's touching or some other matter. Um, create a safe space um, when you talk to your child. Make sure you're giving them attention. Make sure you're not distracted, things like that. And then model helping behavior. Show that it's okay to ask for help. And show when um, you ask for help and it's okay to ask for help is healthy. And be a compassionate listener. All right. And for teens, I'm going to go ahead and skip this because we usually... Um, talk um, about this in middle school or with um, other groups. So I'll just move forward. But if you want more information about teenagers, feel free to email me. Warning signs of child sexual abuse. This is not limited to this list. Again, I do have a packet with more signs. And just because you see some of these signs doesn't mean that is child sexual abuse. It could be some other factor. It's really important to pay attention to context. Maybe your child is showing me signs that I'm gonna talk about because you just moved to the area, or maybe there's a loss in the family, or maybe you just had a baby, there's another, now they have a sibling, and maybe they are showing different um, behavior signs or different behaviors and is making um, them uncomfortable. So I don't want to scare anyone if you see anything um, on this list. So some behavioral signs withdrawn, um, from physical contact, they feel threatened or scared. Regressive behaviors, what that mean is, for example, a, a third grader who stops um, thumb sucking a long time ago starts all of a sudden um, sucking their thumb or bedwetting. Um, so regressing back to a younger age or younger um, age behaviors. Age inappropriate sexual behaviors. So if they are acting on um, their peers, or like I said, with their toys, if they're doing any kind of um, sexual behaviors in that way. And then sleep disturbances and nightmares. This is also true for adults. Um, they have flashbacks. They have a hard time um, with um, thinking about the, the situation. Um, so they have a hard time sleeping. And some verbal cues. So one warning sign is they use inappropriate adult only phrases. So they're using sexualized words or um, they seem like they have too much or copious knowledge of sexual acts, language. Um, this is a warning sign because you have to wonder where are they getting this information? How do they have knowledge about these specific acts or languages or words or phrases? Where are they where is the source of this information? Um, unexplained silence. So what I mean by this is maybe the child seems withdrawn, they're quiet. Maybe they used to be outgoing and, and, and they used to conversate with people and now they have changed their behavior or how they interact with people. So suddenly less talkative. Some physical signs, of course, please go to your um, physician first before assuming that it's child sexual abuse, but here are some physical signs, some injuries in the genital area, broken bones, or um, um, blood on the sheets or clothing. All right, concerns of suspected child sexual abuse. So maybe your child said something indirectly to you or seems uncomfortable around a certain person. Um, here are some things that you can do. So create a non-threatening space. Make sure you can hear your child. You can give them the attention they need. Make it a casual conversation. You don't want to scare your child. You don't want to make them feel nervous. Like if your face, if your body language shows that you're scared, your child may recant what they said 
or decide not to tell you anything because they don't want to upset you, things like that. Especially if the perpetrator told them um, to keep it a secret or if you tell someone you're going to get in trouble, things like that. They're very scared to come out. Ask questions at a child's level of understanding, listen and then follow up. If you're not sure how to respond, it's important to let your child know, I want to be there for you, I want to help you, I want to answer your question, but I want to make sure I answer it correctly. So you don't have to answer right then and there. Just acknowledge their, that they asked the question and then come back later. Using I statements, you don't want to blame the child, you don't want them to think that it's their fault. Because a lot of the times the perpetrator will say that it's their fault for this happening, um, or if you tell someone it's going to be your fault. Provide reassurance that you're going to be there for them, you believe them, and um, you're here for them if they ever want to tell you anything. And be patient if they don't tell you directly that something is happening. And then handling a disclosure. So maybe a child did tell you that someone is um, hurting them and touching them inappropriately. Stay calm. Um, one thing you can say, I'm happy to help you, be supportive, say I'm sorry, that's not right, you have a right to be safe, affirm them. Let them know they did the right thing by telling you, praise them for telling you, because you want your child to ask for help. You don't want them to keep it a secret. Believe them, it's not your fault, I believe you. Empower them, you have a right to be safe, and then report it. Uh, and then you can seek services, um, victim services center at a, or at a different center. Um, and then if you want, you can call Childline yourself. Um, if you want to do that, you can um, do that so you can receive services, things like that. Or you can call our hotline if you need support. And if you don't feel comfortable talking to us, because we are mandated reporters. So if you identify your child and suspect any child, uh, child abuse, would, we would have to report it. But if you do want advice and you want support, you can talk to us without identifying your child. All right, so just to remember, the goal was to know that we have the responsibility as adults to end child sexual abuse, not children. And then a new, another action you can take is to trust your gut and pay attention to people who exhibit questionable interactions with the child. If you're questioning this person, you feel uncomfortable around this person, they exhibit some strange behavior, trust your gut um, because you wanna keep your child safe. You don't have to play nice. Your child safety is first. And then the benefit of that, uh, we will keep children safe. And if there is a disclosure, then the child can begin to heal, moving from being a victim to a survivor. And, and that is it about awareness. Here's a little quote from Nelson Mandela. Safety and security don't just happen. They are a result of collective co um, consensus and public investment. We owe our children, the most vulnerable citizens in our society, a life free of violence and fear. Nelson Mandela. Is there any questions about um, child sexual abuse? Because now I'm going to move towards previewing the lesson as if you are third graders. Okay. So, all right. So the video is on me, and what I'm going to do. I am just going to do the lesson as if you're children. There we go. All right, so my name is Miss Rice, and it's my job to come to lots of different schools and talk to kids like you about different types of touches and how they make us feel. But before I do that, I do want to go over some words with you so we know what we're talking about and we know what they mean. So the first word is the word trust. What does it mean to trust someone? What does it mean when I say, I trust this person? And what I'm looking for um, as an answer would be, you believe the person, what the person is saying to you is the truth, and they're being honest to you, and you can tell them very important things. And then the next word is private. What does it mean when I say this here is private or that is private? And I'll get some answers, and what I'm looking for is private means it belongs to you and to you only. And then the next word is appropriate. We try to make sure they know what that word means. What does it mean when I say this is appropriate? 
and I'll get some answers. And what I'm looking for is something appropriate is when something is okay to do at the right time, the right place. Okay, and then we'll move on to touches. The first type of touch is a appropriate touch. And these are touches that we like to get and we give to our friends and family to show how much we care about them. So what do you think an appropriate touch could be? I'll get some answers and I'll get hugs, um, handshakes, high fives, all of these things. They're appropriate, they're safe to give. And then inappropriate touches. Inappropriate touches are touches we don't like to get. And if we give them to our friends and family, they might be upset, they might cry, um, and it's against the rules, you'll get in trouble. So what's an inappropriate touch? And most of the time they wanna give me all of um, the examples of inappropriate touching. They'll say hitting, punching, kicking, all of these things, hair pulling, um, things like that. And then the next type of touch. Um, this type of touch has to do with the private parts of your body. And these are the parts that are covered up by our bathing suit. And what did we say private means again? And then hopefully they remember my definition. And the definition was private means it belongs to you and to you only. And your body belongs to you and it's private. And then I move on to the next thing and it's, so let's pretend I brought a baby with me to class and it was your job to take care of the baby. What are some reasons why you would have to, you must touch the private parts of the baby's body to take care of it? And I'll get diaper changing, which is correct. So I'll say, yes, you're gonna help the baby by getting wipey and you are going to touch the private parts of the baby's body to get the baby clean. And that's a good, that's a safe and healthy reason to be clean. And then what's another time? And they'll tell me bath time. So during bath time, you are going to get that sponge, sponge, and you are going to touch the private parts of that baby's body to get that baby clean. Again, being clean is a safe and healthy reason. And then the last reason is I ask them, what if my baby's very, very sick and very, very ill? Um, and so this is when I'm talking about getting a physical or a checkup. So at the doctor's office, if my baby's sick or needs a checkup, the doctor's gonna check um, the baby's body or check your body from head to toe. And they might check the private parts of your body to make sure that's healthy, just like your heart, just like your lungs, they're gonna check your body. But the doctor's supposed to tell you first before they do that, and your parent or guardian should be in the room and they should tell your parent as well. To make sure you're safe and you're comfortable. And then that's it. The only two reasons why someone would touch the private parts of your body is to keep you clean or to keep you healthy. And if they're not trying to keep you clean, and if they're not trying to keep you healthy, then this is a very unsafe, inappropriate touch that I call secret touching. And touching should never be a secret. Secret touching could be someone trying to touch your private parts. Secret touching could be someone asking you to touch their private parts. Or secret touching could be someone asking you to take off all your clothes for no good reason. They're not trying to keep you clean or healthy. And who might do this? It could be a grown up, an adult. It could be a teenager. It could be someone your own age or close to your age. It could be a stranger. Or it could be someone that you know and you thought you knew them really, really well. Maybe you love them and you trust them and now you're a little confused and you have mixed up feelings. But do you think most people want a secret touch? And they all say no. So, right, most people don't want a secret touch. Most people want to see you grow up happy and healthy and strong and want to keep you safe. But I do have some safety tips I want to share with you so you know what to do if someone was, someone was trying to do secret touching to you or maybe this is happening now and now you're gonna know what to do. Or maybe a friend tells you and you're gonna share them the same thing. You wanna hear my tips? And they all say yes. All right, so the first card, you have to guess the clues to each word on the card. So the first one is the red card. If somebody was trying to touch you in a way that you don't like and you feel uncomfortable and weird and strange, you need to tell that person to stop. So what's one short word to tell someone to stop? And they tell me no, like, right? You need to say no very firmly, very strongly to that person and say no. And then after you say no to this person, do you think this person is safe to be around? And they all say no, so, right? This person is not safe to be around. So the next rule or tip 
rhymes with no, and it means to get away fast. And y'all guess, somebody guesses go, I might go. You need to go to a safe place because this person is not safe to be around. And you don't need to be alone with this person. And the next rule, the last rule is after you go to a safe place, you need to find a grown up that you trust and do what? And somebody will tell me tell. Right, you need to go tell that person what happened so you can get it to stop. So, and I demonstrate um, telling someone. So I will say, mom, I need to talk to you, it's important. Um, someone's trying to touch the private parts of my body. I got away, I don't wanna be alone with this person and I came to tell you, can you help me? And then we do the cards one more time, I prompt them. Um, if somebody was trying to touch you in a way that you don't like, you would say, no, they're not safe to be around, so you need to go to a safe place, find a grown-up you trust, and tell. So they say these prompts maybe two more times before I play a video. So before the video, though, we do a um, activity. So for third graders, we do this activity. You know if you see it? There we go. So there's two hands, and what they need to do is write the names of 10 grown-ups that that they know and that they trust on each finger of each hand. And then we share our answers um, and make sure all of their answers are appropriate. Sometimes I'll look at Obama or their dog and I was like, no, you gotta put something else, someone else, I can't put that down. So, so we do that activity and then we play the video. And I tell them to listen for the word assertive and what that means to be assertive. And then I have some questions after the video. I guess we will play the video. Okay, so at this point, um, as Ms. Wright's mentioned, we'll play the video, but we're going to stop the recording because we don't want to violate the copyright laws associated with recording the, vi the video. But we want you to be able to see it. It's typically shown when we have this parent preview. So we'll show the video with the recording off, and then we'll come back on in the event you might have questions or comments to share. Um, because we certainly want to address those. Uh, what I can do is maybe summarize the video, what happens, the plot of David okay. Speaks Up. Um, so what yeah. happens, David is upset in the beginning of the video because his Uncle Terry is um, uh, sexually abusing him, is touching him. In um, he tells his friends, he tells um, a boy and a girl about it, and the boy and the girl tell him that you need to tell someone. You need to tell someone so your uncle can stop. So, and they talk about being assertive and, assert, and what assertive means. And assertive means to stand up for yourself. Your feelings are important and you need to tell people how you feel and what you want. So there's multiple times in the video where David was practicing being assertive. Um, one time um, there's a kid that's bullying him or pushing him at basketball games and he tells this kid Marcus to stop pushing me um, during uh, our basketball games. Um, it doesn't work but he was practicing being assertive and his, um, his peers um, encourage him and praise him for, for doing that. And then he tells his teacher about um, the basketball court and the bullying and the child Marcus pushing him. So he's being assertive by telling his teacher about um, the bullying. And then there's a, a, other, some other times, there's a, a mother that tries to ask David if he needs a ride home. And David says, sorry, Mrs. Sansa, I can't go home or I can't get a ride from you. I have to ask my parents first. So that's again, him being assertive, standing up for himself, protecting himself. Um, and then by the very end of the video, um, he does stand up to Uncle Terry. He tells Uncle Terry, no, I don't want to go to the ball game with you. I feel uncomfortable. The way you touch me is wrong. And then Uncle Terry leaves. And I forgot to say that there is a scene where David is telling his friends about his uncle. And, and then it flashes back to the story he's telling. So David's sitting on the couch with his Uncle Terry, and Uncle Terry wants to show him photos on his phone. And then um they start, and then he starts tickling his belly and then it phases out. You don't see anything, it's all like fuzzy. The film um, director um, made it blurry so you can't see what um, Uncle Terry's doing. 
um, to David and then it clears up again. So it looks really, really blurry and then it clears up. And we see David just sitting there uncomfortable. He looks scared and confused. And Uncle Terry starts using some grooming behaviors such as saying, oh, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. We didn't do anything wrong. And we need to keep this a secret from mom and dad so we can keep going to ball games together. So he's using a lot of manipulative um, conver um, uh, tactics with David. And then it goes back to David telling his friends and his friend said that is wrong. So I'm sorry I skipped that part. So that part, there you don't see um, the uncle really attacking the child at all. It's just implied. So um, any questions about that scene at all? It's blurry. You don't see. You see tickling, and then it's blurry. Okay. And then by the end of the video, he is assertive. He tells his uncle no, and then he tells his mom, and his mom and dad are very supportive. Um, and he feels happy. David said that he feels better now that he doesn't have this secret anymore. His children shouldn't have this burden and keep it a secret. And it ends with that. And then I do have some questions for the kids. I asked them whose fault was the secret touching? Was it Uncle Terry's fault or was it David's fault? And they all shout no. I mean, um, Uncle Terry. And I asked them, was it David's fault at all? And they all shout no. Sorry. They all shout no. So, and then the next question is, what does it mean to be assertive? And they all know that it means to stand up for yourself, to stand up tall, look at the person in the eye and tell them how, how you feel. Then they give me some examples of when was David assertive and who did he end up telling his secret to and did they look upset? And the kids um, answer all the questions correctly most of the time. And then I end it with the cards one more time. I do the prompts, the no-go tell cards. And I do add one more um, snippet. So after the no go tell, I said, Is it ever your fault? They all say no. Is it ever too late to tell? They all say no. And I asked them, What should you do if the first person you tell doesn't believe you or they don't help you? And a kid will blurt out, Keep telling someone until someone helps you. I said, Yep, you're right. And then I give them pencils that say no go and tell. And there is our hotline number on it. And I tell them this number is kind of like 911. You only call it for emergencies. So if you want to talk to someone about secret touching, you can call that number, but please first tell your tr trusted grown up, and then you can call together and share them that number. The people on that number should be able to help you. And that's it. And usually kids don't um, have too many questions. Um, they say thank you, they seem very appreciative about the information. They feel like they have control, like they know what to do. So, yeah. And Miss Rice comes into all of our third grade classes and we typically make this presentation in third grade and in fourth grade move on to AIDS education. In fifth grade it's puberty and then in middle school of course our students participate in formal health class and learn about drugs and alcohol and a continuation of sexuality. Um, when we get into high school, Victim Services comes in again and works with our physical education teachers and health classes on, um, on things that are, I'm sorry, on things that are oh, connected yeah. to sexuality for those teenagers. So mm -hmm. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say for ninth graders, they receive um, dating violence and what is a healthy relationship since their relationships are serious then. And then um, 11th and 12th graders will get um, just awareness about sexual assault especially since they may be going to college and there is a big problem with sexual assault on campus. Yeah. So, so in addition to the academics and some of the other activities we have for our students in the school district, this is another component where we try to be very proactive and help educate our students in these regards as well. And of course, because the topics are very sensitive, we like to share the information with parents first. And this is really an example of, of this sort of conversation beginning with our third graders. So we really appreciate those of you that have tuned in tonight. We obviously have some work to do because we weren't able to show you the video in the way that we wanted. So, so we'll work on that from here on out. But I hope that you did find the information to be meaningful and informative and that you won't hesitate to reach out to Miss Jessica Rice or myself with any questions or comments. I would like to extend um, a quick thanks to Mrs. Tara Parr. She's running the cameras and the 
and the three laptops that we have up and running. And of course, uh, Ms. Rice, thanks for coming out tonight. No but if there's anything else from any of our viewers, we're happy to certainly entertain those questions or comments. Uh, thank you. I mean, this is great information and it's really gonna help uh, prepare for a conversation uh, with my with my third grader. And uh, it's been really helpful and thank you very much. Great. Well, thank you for tuning in. And that's that is really the goal that it that it can set up some conversations to help everybody feel a little bit more comfortable and more knowledgeable. So thank you. And I just wanted to say too, and um, this is an opportunity. It's a teachable moment. Your child will come home and they'll bring this piece of paper and this is your time to um, to enter your values and your beliefs around healthy relationships and their body and their right to be safe. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Have a good night. Good night. Good.